Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Miss V. Today we're going to spend some time together doing a beautiful, colorful activity and design. We are going to use the two basic elements of art, which are my probably the most important element, at least to me, which are lines and colors. And using these two elements and combining them together, we're going to be able to create a beautiful harmonic design that will give you um, uh, another like uh, uh, opportunity to practice uh, optical illusion, to practice uh, the color palette and how some colors interact with each other. So kind of learn how to make your own choices when it comes to colors right and then uh, we'll give you also an opportunity to spend some time uh, working on your mental focus mental relaxations fine motor skills coordination skills so once again art give us the opportunity to learn so many different skills not only the ones that are related to the art practice and to the technique and to the media that we are using but also very important mental and social emotional skills remember that the process is more important than the product so don't do something huge and big, do something that is on a small scale. I will personally use my art journal, which is like a squared art journal. If you have a bigger art journal or a bigger piece of mix and media paper, which is the paper that we need for today's activity, I encourage you to divide or cut the full page in two halves so you can use it for a couple of design sometimes if we start to do something that is big we feel overwhelmed and we have the tendency of not finishing but one of the most important things that i have been trying to teach you is that we always finish what we start it's something that I set, it's sort of a rule that I set in school with my students and I tell them we're going to do it maybe a little smaller, but we're going to take our time and we're going to finish of what we start. Even in the case that you see that the practice is not going exactly as you expected, or even if the final result is not exactly like mine or like you imagine in your mind, you're going to embrace it and accept it and learn it. So please, if you're not using a journal, I highly encourage you to keep track of everything that you do, finish all of your project and like uh, save them together in a folder. It's going to be amazing for you to see the improvement through the years or through the months of practicing art. It's going to give you an idea of how your personal artistic personality and direction is taken, right? But, so it's really, really, really important feedback that you're giving to yourself. For today practice, so you need your mixed media paper or your mixed media art journal colorful markers i will use the shadow art alcohol markers all the links and the, the informations are included in the description box where you can buy them but it, if today you want to do the practice and you don't have alcohol markers and you have just a scholastic crayola markers please do so remember that we can create beautiful things using very basic materials sometimes we want the best material the most expensive and professional but if we don't have a good foundations and a good technique, nothing really is going to happen. So if you learn good foundations and good techniques, you can create beautiful stuff even with affordable materials. And then you will decide in the future if you want to invest in something more. You will need two black permanent markers. If you have Sharpie, use them, one regular and one extra fine. And in case you want to feel a little safer, you want to do the design first with a pencil, you will need a pencil for drawing. For like a saving sometimes I will do the design directly with the markers and then I will color and I will do all the details but as I said if you want to do the first step with a pencil pause my video and go over an outline with the black markers so you feel a little safer you're more than welcome to do so please read the description box there is a link for uh, becoming members if you would like to support my channel and to have access to premium content there are two types of membership silver and gold and all the details are also included in a post so i highly encourage you also to check in community i post the beautiful things some of the posts are for everybody some posts are just exclusively for members so stay tuned and just have fun prep your materials if you want to practice with me if you don't have too much time and you want to divide this practice in two do so i'm going to switch the camera so we can start it together okay guys this is my journal as i said before it's like a 
medium size square journal. Anyway, when I do pattern, I like to reframe. So we're gonna create a smaller space. Now, if you want something for size, you're gonna use the ruler. Otherwise, you can do it first with a pencil and then go over with the black markers. The frame is just for us to kind of have a very specific space that we know that we're gonna feel with the pattern and the design that we are about to learn together. Sometimes a reframing in square or circular spaces will give you also a more like a focus on the space that you have to feel. Now, this is like the frame that I created. And then you can go on top of the line very slowly with the black markers. If you want to do it directly with the markers, feel free to do so. As you notice, it's kind of precise, but not geometrically perfect because this is me is what i want to do i want to do very nice and well crafted design but i really love to see the little imperfection um and the like you know that comes just with free hands design now i'm gonna switch and i'm gonna use the fine markers as i told you before if you want to do this passage with the pencil first do so so you will see what i do you can do with a pencil pause my video and then go on um, after you've done. We're going to create a sort of like a biomorphic shape. So nothing in particular. They could be kind of a oval, circular, organic shapes like this. Just make sure you can do as many as you want. They can be slightly smaller or bigger than mine. Just make sure that there is some space between them and between them and the edges of our frame. So go like in a spontaneous way, don't think too much. And we're going to fulfill this space with those, um, with these unprecised oval. Oh, well. And that's it. Do you see there is some space between this beautiful, nice gap and I have nine. You might have a little more or a little less according to the space that you have available. Now, once again, keep working with the pencil and then you can do everything with the marker. We're going to start to fill these uh, uh, biomorphic shapes with some nice uh, uh, abstract, I would say, sort of flower. This is going to be the center of each flower, so I'm going to position them in a different direction to give a little more movement and rhythm to my uh, piece. I usually place the center of the flower. I know that now it's difficult to see that these are center of the flower, but stay with me and you will find out. When the, like, the shape is a little like uh, smaller. Now inside this flower, I'm going to uh, create a sort of a tiny, pretend that you have to draw a tiny little bean. Mm? So, once again, position this bean wherever you feel that is the right spot inside the center of your flower. Now we're going to fill the rest of the space with petals. Remember that we did it also in the past, like with previous pattern, like in this one. We want to fill the space with the petals, so our petals will have a really different shapes and sizes, right? By the way, if you're new to this channel and you like the pattern that I just show you, that is the long video for it. So take your time and very slowly you will go up, curved, down, up, curved, down, up, 
with a curve and down. You see that you have some gaps? Leave them. We are going to fill them then with the black. For now, don't worry about the gaps between the petal. Make sure that they are not too big, but don't squeeze too many petals. We want to really see the petals. One. Keep going. Of course, you will respect the direction of the center of the flower. So you see that my petals are oriented in different direction. These will give the design, as I say, more like a rhythm, a movement, and it will make the whole thing more dynamic and fun to look at and to work on also. Nice and slow. Up, curve down, up, curve down, and maybe another tiny little here. Remember to try your best to touch the edge of the biomorphic shape. One more. And we keep going. Line round and down, round and down. The act of repeating uh, the same gesture over and over, you might have noticed that gives us the opportunity to really focus and at the same time relax, right? We know what we are going, where we are going and what we are doing. So there is no stress, but at the same time, we are completely, completely present in these actions, the repetition of these lines. And once again, I will never stop to be amazed by the fact that there's something so simple like a line can give us so many different options for our design. So it's really impressive the simple the like the very simple things that can have a really huge impact right now we're gonna finish we're gonna put away our extra fine markers and we're gonna take the regular tip markers and we're gonna nice and slow fill all the black gaps and color the center of the flowers black except the little beans that we trace inside if you have been doing everything with the pencil now you can uh, if you want, pause the video and go over with the extra fine Sharpie on your pencil lines. If you need to erase some of the lines after you do so, and then you're going to catch up with me and start to fill the gaps. Don't press hard on the paper with the markers. There is really no need. If you, by accident, cover a little more of the petal, just to retrace it and nothing is going to happen. Remember that we embrace the little imperfection because, you know, what is perfection after all? That is so boring. So we embrace our personality showing during the process. We embrace the little surprises, the little happy accident like Bob Ross used to call them. We embrace them and they will become part of this project and part of this very, like this very moment, right? Mostly if you are a very young artist, if you are a kid practicing with me, if you're a young student, or if you are a very beginner, be nice and be kind to yourself. Just to focus on what you are doing. Enjoy the process. Be present. And be happy if some little mistake happen. And remember, finish what you started. That it's a very important life lesson, not only for art, but really beyond the art studio and the art class.
why we are feeling these black gaps. Um, I want to, uh, this actually these white gaps and we're feeling them with black. I also want to take the opportunity um, to remind you that I um, post in community some nice posts with announcement and updates. So make sure after the videos or in general to check the community for posts that can give you important information about what is coming up in my channel. For example, I have these two type of memberships available. One is silver, a little more basic, and one is gold. With the membership, you have, of course, both the silver and gold members have the opportunity to have an early access to all of, uh, early access to all of my content and uh, one uh, a weekly post uh, specific where I give you uh, advices and tips uh, on uh, technique and media and specific artworks. The gold members will also have the opportunity to um, participate in polls and have priority in the chat, in the comment, so I will be able to read your comment first and respond to you promptly. And they also have access to one special video that is basically myself in my studio when I paint, when I prepare my artworks for uh, exhibitions or markets. And so I kind of open the door to my painting practice and I will guide you in beautiful painting activity. So make sure that you check those out. And if that is something that is for you, you might want to consider. They're also like a update and on status and photos. And oopsie, I'm forgetting. I keep forgetting the center of the flowers. Go slow around the bean. Make sure to feel all the gaps so the black really, really looks black and very saturated, no gaps. And remember, if a little mistake happens, you will just slowly and carefully go over and modify a little bit the edges of the shape with the black so it will be embraced in the design and nobody will even notice. Don't press hard on the paper. If you add a lot of pressure, it's gonna be more difficult for you to kind of control your hand and move it in a natural way because you add the pressure and so you kind of charge too much your uh, wrist, right? And so it's gonna be difficult for you to move uh, smoothly around uh, the, the shapes that you have to feel. Remember that my videos tend to be longer, not super long, depend on, of course, on the design and the media that we are using, but I do not speed up the practice because for me, it's very important to guide you step by step the way that you need to be supported and guided. Of course, these are video, they can be paused, they can be watched again, you can watch the whole thing, speeding it up and then practice at your own convenience, or you can divide the practice in two or three times, right? Of course, I'm gonna do it in one time because I want to show you the whole process together. But you do you, you know your schedule, you know your needs, you know 
the time that you feel that you want and can dedicate to art so maybe in one time you can do all this part of the design setting the design and outlining and another time you will do the coloring and the final details exactly when i do the same is for when i publish a, a painting a, a project so we're painting tutorials with watercolors they are long right because we need time to create art if you want to do something that has a quality and if you want to do something then give us uh, something back and then you really feel accomplished because you know that you are learning something we cannot rush we already rush too much in life and we should really remove this uh, uh, notion in our mind that we can do everything in 10-15 minutes no we cannot there are few things that we can do and there are other things that instead that requires a longer time. So this is why I do not speed up my video because I really want to see, I want to show you exactly how long, more or less, because we all work at a different pace. I see it all the time with my students. I have students that are slow and they take a longer time, students that are faster. Sometimes they might be faster because they have a, they are personally talented in art and they have an advanced skill. But sometimes it happens it's just because they want to get done and they want to rush. Because unfortunately, this is a little bit the general message that society gives us. And then we unfortunately tend to replicate in school as well, making them switch from activity to activity super quick and fast, which is not necessarily healthy. Now, once we finish, we're gonna have fun with some colors. I invite you to choose your own palette. I'm gonna play around with orange, red, a magenta, a very light aqua color, a turquoise and blue. I'm gonna mix uh, uh, cold and warm colors, but you do you. You can do entirely warm colors, you can do entirely cold colors, so you can mix and match. Just relax and have fun and be spontaneous in the choice of the colors because you really uh, want to see how you relate with colors spontaneously. Now I'm using these Shadow Art Alcohol Marker. They have a thicker point and a fine point that allows me to go a little faster. This is why I like that so much. But remember, you need to make sure that you rotate the tip because otherwise if you use the big tip like that, you might risk to go outside the edges and the outlines and we don't want that because we're going to need to fill this gap differently and I'm going to show you why. So if you have the opportunity to have a very thick marker, use the thick side of it, the thick point, but just be careful when you go close to the edge of the petal and to the edge of the biomorphic shape that we created at the very beginning. And as I was saying, don't overthink it, the choice of color. Put some markers next to each other, put some markers together, look at the color of the lead so you can see more or less like uh, uh, if they go together well. And for the rest also have fun and play. Mostly if you have been doing art not for so long and you're still like learning and figure it out your personal relationship to colors. What are the colors that attract you the most? How these colors make you feel? Then another question that you might want to ask yourself when you choose the colors for an artwork is say, what do I want people feel when they look at this design? I want them to feel more calm. I want them to feel energized. I want them to feel, I don't know, moody so you will make your choices sometimes just according to what you want to feel and that is for me still the best way to go because when we create art we should not create art to please other people we should create the art that we really feel authentic and true to ourselves so always first prioritize your need your wish your will toward colors, toward media, toward the subject that you want to create. But then you can also ask yourself questions about how your project will impact the viewer. And so what are your expectations for yourself and from other? So let me see, let me see. I'm going to play around with warm 
and cold. These peas, like mixing together, warm and cold colors will give you movement and dynamism, right? And a beautiful color pattern, beautiful rhythm. Eh? And so we make you probably feel energized, engaged with the peas. Let me see. I'm gonna do red probably here. And you can repeat the same color more than one time, mostly if you do not have all the colors that I do have available. If you have a more limited palette, remember that first you can color with a marker over another. Of course, they are not gonna blend as much and as well as like other media do, but they will still change the colors and give you another tint or another tones right on the same family of the colors they won't change radically but they will give you some more options if you have a more uh, palette more colors available you can decide to use the nine different colors or more if you have more flowers that i do or you can just repeat the same color for a couple of times Make sure that you don't leave any gaps. This time we are not really working on shading and creating value. We are more like we want a very nice uh, saturated uh, plain color. So no gaps. Uh, nice and flat because we know that we're gonna give it um, some nice optical illusion in a different way. And I'm, oopsie, let me, I forgot the little bean inside. Of course, it's your choice if you want to leave the bean inside white, but I think that it looks really nice that they feature the same colors, the petals and the inside of the flower. Today, you can even try to... Um, Practice with include the different type of colors, warm and cold, and then maybe you can redo the design again, choosing only one palette, so only warm and then only cold. Remember that my videos are available for you, and you can watch them and practice with me as many times as you need and wish. Of course, the yellow always bleeds into the black and. But as I say, we embrace it. There we go. And I think uh, that I will go with this purplish color. Let's see. Mm, nice, very intense violet light violet and we're all done with our flowers inside we're not gonna do any gaps so you can already put away put aside your colorful markers and now we're gonna go back to the extra fine sharpie and we're gonna use it to create an optical illusion filling these gaps with a simple curved line now if you want to do it this with pencil first and then with markers you can but it's going to take you a long time so a bigger commitment i invite you to do it directly with a sharpie take your time you can go slower than i go and remember if at the beginning because this is like include a lot of fine model skills it looks simple, but it is not really. You need to have a lot of fluency with your lines in order to leave more or less the same gaps between the lines, respect the curves, make sure that these lines are nice and smooth. 
But if something happened and your lines are still not where they are supposed to be, remember that this is a practice. And the more you practice, the better you become. And also you embrace, as we said several times, the imperfections. If you need to go slower, go slower. If you need to move your paper around, move your paper around. Just as you notice, make sure that you don't do your lines like this. You need to really make a nice, beautiful curve. The more, the bigger like it's the curve, the better is gonna be the final result and the optical illusion, and you're gonna love it. If some of the lines, as you say, go closer to each other or farther apart, it's not a big deal. Actually, at the end, it's gonna add the movement and interest to your piece. Just avoid, of course, to overlap the lines. And now, Make sure that you are in a comfortable position. Make sure that you're breathing deeply and intentionally. All of your mind is with your hand, tracing these lines on this paper. You don't see, you don't think anything else that is not these nice curved lines that are embracing our beautiful design. And once again, a repetition of one simple element can really have a huge impact on something. The repetition of just the curved lines will have a huge visual impact on this design and will really transform it. If you feel that you need to take a break, take a break, shake your hands, you know. It's like that we are doing a little workout. It's like when you work out in the gym. You need to take your break, you need to stretch, it's exactly the same. I have many of, well, Many of you sharing feedback and comment and their own experiences while doing my tutorial. And I'm so grateful for every single one of you. Um, some people, they're actually, they told me that they are using my tutorials and practicing again some art because they are recovering from injuries. And uh, definitely art uh, is as important as a sport uh, and rehabilitation gymnastic because you know it's uh, important to recover our fine motor skills and keep them sharp and keep them well trained and art to give us the opportunity to really refine and train the coordination skills the brain hands and the fine motor skills, mostly when you start to arrive in an age, you know, and you are afraid to lose that coordination, these type of practice are an incredible resource. It's really like an holistic uh, well-being practice that you're including in your routine. And as I always say to my students and to everybody when uh, I have the opportunity, is that we should, we should really change a narrative about art and art to practice. We do not teach art in school and we do not practice art as students or as people because we wanna become professional artists. But we do art because it really complete our life experience. It gives us opportunity to really enhance and support critical thinking skills, problem solving skills, social and emotional skills, fine model skills, and on and on. 
So it's like uh, the benefits of art are amazing. And as I always say, think about the sports, right? We all grew up playing some sport. Some of us are just for fun. Some of us a little more seriously, right? Like semi-professional or professional. But that is a very, very small percentage of people. The majority of us practice sport because we just love them. They were introduced to us. They were taught us in schools. We played with our friends and we kept playing. For example, if you like soccer, right? You still see and sometimes some meet with your friends for an amicable games. You still practice soccer with your kids. Even if you're not a professional soccer player, right? That doesn't stop you. The same is for basketball. The same is for volleyball. The same is for dance. I love dance and I... I still dance, even if I'm not a professional dancer and I will never be. But in art, for some reason, the narrative that they taught us, if you're not going to be an artist at one point, you don't need to practice art. So many people don't take art electives in school. They don't practice art in their life. And that is completely wrong. We should face art and we should approach art practices with the same mindset that we use to approach a sport. And art should be really supported and included in education as much as sports are. And sometimes, unfortunately, in some part of the world, the mostly in the majority still doesn't happen. But art, it's very beneficial. And it pushes us beyond our limits and it pushes us to really dedicate some time and attention on ourselves. help us to express feelings that maybe words cannot express, give us an amazing outlet. So keep, up, keep practicing art in school, in studios, on your own, with friends, with your kids, with your grandkids, with your homeschool students and homeschool kids, if you have those, but oh wow, my hand, I feel that. I feel it, I'm gonna start to turn around the design, so I'm gonna facilitate. Remember, if you need to go slower, go slower. You do not have to finish in a rush. You can divide the practice in a couple of times, just to finish what you start. Don't let unfinished stuff because believe it or not, they're going to really impact your mental status and your social emotional status. If you know that everything is like, like when you're very, very messy, sometimes it's really important to take a moment to organize the mess and you will know where everything is and you will feel really at peace. The same way when you finish what you start and you feel at peace. With yourself. These are really tiny little things, right, that we can turn into habits that will really make your life much better and will have such a positive impact on your daily life. Make sure that you close those corners, right, and so the lines are really, really, really curved. And I think that now you already started to see the direction that this design is taking. The fact that we curve the lines and so in doing this action, we go over and we overlap the black, making the edges of these lines darker and creating this optical illusion that the biomorphic shape with the flower inside are going down, right? And going, really, they are going below the lines and the lines are coming up. 
they're popping out from the paper. And once again, how gorgeous is this design? And still, we use two simple, basic elements, such as lines and colors. How amazing is the fact that with lines and colors, we can create something so beautiful, so engaging, so like full of life, movement and rhythm. Make sure that when two directions encounter each other, you also feel all the way the little corner. Ooh, I love it. So gorgeous. and over here we're almost done And we did it. Now a little, just one final touch inside the petals. I'm gonna do one line and a dot. One line and a dot. One line and a little dot or very like a short segment more than a dot. One, just to add that nice final detail into our flower. Look how pretty to support that three-dimensionality, right? That really optical illusion to give those flowers some style and personality. If you don't wanna do this final detail, feel free to make your choice. You are the artist after all that you make your own decision. I do what I think uh, you know, it's the best it's for my design. And voila, it's all done. I'm gonna switch the camera so we can say goodbye. 
Okay, friends, we did it again. How happy we are of this design. I am absolutely happy. It's gorgeous. You see the optical illusion, these flowers going down, the lines coming up, this beautiful harmony between the colors and the lines. And it was a lot of fun and it gave me the opportunity to really bubble myself into the like uh, this artistic practice and forget about everything else and be very present and very focused. I hope that you feel refreshed, you feel really focused, relaxed at the same time, and you feel that you learn something new and something different. And most of all, you feel the improvement in your fine motor skills and in your like a personal connection with colors, lines, and other elements of art that will allow you to make choices about what colors I'm going to use, what the position, where I'm going to position my shapes, and so on and on. You will become more and more intentional and more and more fluent the more you practice, so hopefully with me. Um, remember, subscribe to my channel if you didn't do so. Remember to read the description box with uh, information about the practice, uh, the materials that I use, and link where you can find them, link for the membership and other important information. Remember sometimes to check a community for posts when I will uh, notify about what is coming up, new videos, new short uh, um, memberships. Maybe I'm working on a shopping so you can shop because I have been asked if the people, you know, I love this, they can buy it and whatever. So I'm kind of, uh, you know, organizing the whole things. And I'm also organizing a Facebook group where you can share, uh, we can share together the pictures of what you have been creating with me. So I thank you so much for watching and practicing with me. And I see you all very soon with another amazing practice. Ciao a tutti!